So I was watching a lecture by uh, a man named Marty Lobdell, and he outlined the average focus time that the average human being can go. And surprisingly enough, it is lower than expected. Right? Somebody took the time to compile it. And typically, right about 25 to 30 minutes. Hey, hello, Yala. Welcome to another video. Welcome to I'm Koketo and this is Koketo. So, first things first, appreciations. I'd like to thank you all for the amount and number of subscribers that I have. Like, the previous video, I was talking about 300 subscribers and today I'm speaking, I'm very close to 500. I'm a few subscribers short of 500 and it makes me glad, it makes me happy to see that this community is growing, you know. Um, the interactions i post uh, daily motivations hoping that they really do get to people and i really enjoy responding to your comments i enjoy reading your comments they really keep me going so in this video i'll be telling you or like giving you uh, i don't know as a tips but yeah advantages disadvantages and how i get to study long hours how i maximize my productivity by studying more often than usually four hours and i do two sessions of four hours every single day not every single day when I have like during during exam season, maybe tomorrow I'm writing biology, writing a biology exam. So I will start at nine and go up until one, and then start maybe start at seven, start at seven and then go until eleven, and then start again maybe at like two and then go until six six yes. So what I'm basically doing is I'm studying two four hour sessions in a single day, which maximizes my productivity, right? And it's it's trust me. Trust me, for me, it works. I'd like to assume that it will work for you. If only you really consider the tips that I'm going to give, if you listen very carefully and stick till the end of this video. And yeah, so let's get into this beautiful video, people. So now the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you plan your stuff the night before, right? You make sure that you set up everything the day before you start because the most distracting thing is when you have to study, and you don't know where to start, right? And you don't know where to start. So what I do is the night before, I make sure that I have my book out. So like, for example, uh, you find that tomorrow I'm writing, so, or maybe tomorrow I'm studying. So what I aim to do is to make sure that I have my book out, I have it open on the page that I'm going to study, and most probably even open the desk uh, tab that I'm going to use tomorrow morning, such that if I say I'm studying at 9, then at 8.59, everything is set up for me. Everything is here. I don't have to look. I don't have to say what. Because the most distracting thing that could happen when you have to study is when you want to study, but you don't know where to start. When you don't know where to start with your studying, you know that I have to study, let us say for argument's sake, uh, maths. You have to study maths. You have to practice maths, but you don't know where to start. And the fact that you wake up in the morning, and immediately want to plan how you're going to do your video. That time that you used to plan, it's, it's, it's consuming. You should have been using that time to study. And that's why I'm saying you should plan ahead, make sure that you have everything out, set up your table such that by the time you come and sit down here in the morning, everything is set for you. You don't have to look for a pencil case, don't have to look for this. You're going to use highlighters. You leave your highlighters here. If you're going to need, I don't know, an exam pad, you just leave your exam pad here such that tomorrow morning, just get started you get to the job and now building up from the first point that i just made you want to always make sure that you start promptly at that time that you have set for yourself so when i'm starting starting at nine i make sure that 8 59 i'm seated here such that by the time nine o'clock hits by nine of the cop i'm seated and I'm, I'm i'm very ready to start i literally start at that time because now the problem with wanting to start later is you end up procrastinating i tell you what one problem that I always had um, until I started implementing this type of study method is if I was telling myself that I'm studying at 7, at 10 past 7, if I have not studied at 10 minutes past 7, what do I do? I round up, I'll study at 8. I have 15 minutes to relax. I check the time after a while, the time is 12 minutes past 8, 7 minutes past 8. I'm like, Ish, you know what? I'll start at nine. I'll start at nine. You, you keep rounding it up. And that's why I'm saying you need to start promptly at that time. Because then if you keep on procrastinating, 
Also, Papa, I'm missing Come on, come on, come on. Now, for my next important tip, um, it's that you want to always stay seated. You want to always stay rooted to your chair. And the best way to really implement this when you're having a study session like myself of four hours is you want to make sure that before you start, you have everything you're going to need for the next four hours. So I know that I'm going to need coffee. I have coffee next to me. If I know that um, what I'm going to need is something like, I don't know, if I'll need snacks, I bring the snacks to me. Because if you're giving yourself reasons to stand up, then that's another opportunity for you to want to get into the zone again. And, and to be honest, the hardest part of the studying process is the actual sitting and getting into the zone. So if you can avoid having to force yourself to get into the zone every few minutes. And again, this links to a point that I was actually thinking about. This is the reason why I don't really readily use uh, the Pomodoro method, right? I do not readily use such things anymore because um, what I noticed is if you use a 25 minute, five, uh, five minute break, 25 minutes go, five minute break, yes, it works. But what it does is it gives you a reason to zone out every 25 minutes. So you figure that maybe you are studying maths or practicing maths. You figure that you are studying physics and you're in the zone, you're doing this question, you, you're going, right? You're going with the group, with the group. And then all of a sudden, the Pomodoro timer goes, ding. what do you do? Do you stop? Do you zone out? Take that five minute break, come back and try again. No, more often than usually, you actually don't stop, you keep going. And then you'll choose to give yourself the break when you want to. And that's when you start deviating from everything. And another thing, another thing, for the love of God, please stay away from your phone hide your phone because what i know is most people especially myself my phone is my biggest distraction whenever i have to study i always feel like someone's grandmother is working overtime because yo you find that i want to use my phone i want to people are offline my youtube is is like there's nothing interesting that i want to watch and then I go to Instagram Reels. I watch, I watch, I watch. TikTok, I scroll, I scroll, I scroll. When I check three hours, it's gone. See this, oh my word. For the love of God, just stay away from your phone. Stay, put your phone away when you have to study. And if you can't put it away, then put it on. Do not disturb. In fact, no, no, you have to put it away. You have to put it away. And two, two ways that I do this and it actually works is for one, I make sure that it's out of sight. Have you ever heard of out of sight, out of mind? Yeah, that, so basically, if my phone is out of sight, if I put it where I cannot see it in my cupboard, in, in, I don't know, on top of, I can't say on top of the roof, but like, if I put it somewhere where I won't be able to see it, then I'm less likely to actually think about it, think about using it. But if it's just here and I can see it, then I can readily just take it and use it, right? This leads me to my second um, way of how you can uh, get rid of your phone. Now you make sure that it's out of reach, even if it means putting under the bed where there's, I don't know, pots and stuff you know put it away where you know that if you want to go for it it's like it really requires a great deal of, of of patience and a great deal of strength and stuff i mean obviously like people will be like yeah obviously if, if i put my phone in the next room i can go take it yo please this is for your future this is for your future i'm just begging you am i begging you yes just put your phone away just put it like put it away where you can't see it even if it means i don't know giving it to uh like i can give it to a roommate like what i do is i can give my phone to um my roommate or even to my study partner we just exchange phones and then i have phone okay when so then what happens is you're obviously not too comfortable with someone else's phone so you can't really use their phone as much as you would use yours so the only thing you can do with someone else's phone is just go into youtube listen to music and that's all or you won't even use it at all so yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even if it means giving someone your phone for that four hours, retrieving it after four hours, you won't die. The world will wait for you. For four hours, the world will wait for you. Do your job. You come back after four hours and, 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 and. Give yourself rewards upon productivity. What I do is I always make sure that I reward myself. So basically, I have my cup of coffee. I tell myself that, dude, if you want another cup of coffee, you have to finish at least two hours of work. You have to finish three hours of work. Yeah, you have to finish this section of work in order to so that helps you stay motivated in a sense when you put on like put along rewards for yourself 
um since what i like doing most is watching youtube videos right so what i always tell myself is okay if i can finish watching this lecture video and understanding almost everything about what's going on here then i can go on to youtube for 20 minutes and if i do it again for the next four hours and if i do it again for the next four hours then i can get a break where I can do my YouTube for, I don't know, I don't know how long, until I start another four hours. So this thing actually works if you really implement it well. So yeah, put your phone away, please. And now on to the advantages and disadvantages of studying for four hours and studying long periods of time. Now the first advantage that this uh, four hour method has is it maximizes productivity immensely right so what it does is if i can do four hours of work in one go in the morning then i can get uh if i do four hours in the morning then i get the afternoon off in a sense right so basically this thing maximizes productivity whilst making sure that you have even more free time if you think about it i just do four hours from let's say from 7 a.m. 7, 8, 9, 10. Ha! Huh? <laughs> so from 7 until 11, I do my studying, right? Then from 11 until I don't know what time your days end, then what do I do? I can play video games, I can go and play football, I can watch YouTube videos, record YouTube, whatever I have to do, I can socialize with friends. Go out so that's literally the advantage of having to do this you know and another advantage of this is that it minimizes the duration of breaks whilst so basically if i go a full four hours then how many breaks have i had in the four hours none right and now this whole four hours means that i can remain in the zone in like for a prolonged period of time and if that's not productivity, then I don't know what is. A disadvantage of studying for such a prolonged period of time is that it causes something called cognitive overload. It might happen, might not happen. Um, it has happened to me a bit here and there. It's what most people will classify as burnout. So, so what this is, is that it is the point of paralysis of information. So basically it is when, um, you, you have so much information crammed up in your head that you cannot uh, readily process and react or act to whatever is being heard. And now that is the end of the video. We have not reached the end of the video. So let us get realistic with this here. Obviously, I study four hours uh, every now and then, but this is not an everyday thing. And whenever I get to really do this, and I do it mostly during my exam time. So whenever I do this thing, um, it works 80% of the time and the other 20% is reality, right? Because in reality, I I'm not a robot. I'm not a robot. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I do not feel like doing something, which is a bad thing. You shouldn't not do something because you don't feel like doing it. But like sometimes there's a lot that I have to do. Four hours is just not it. Maybe I'll be doing two hours and then I get a very serious phone call. I zone out. So yeah, let's keep those factors in our heads and don't beat yourself up. And always remember that a dream delayed is not a dream denied. But otherwise, stay happy and healthy and I love you. Peace. And what this is, is it is the point of... <laughs> so what cognitive overload is... Put it away where you can't see it, even if it means, I don't know, giving it to, uh, like, I can give it to a roommate to hold it for me.